Hi, I'm Tom. And I'm Jackie. Welcome, Welcome to, to North, North County, County Lawnmower. Lawnmower. Today we're going to show you our portable power system that we built here and that you can take with you in emergency situations or whatever you camping, whatever. So anyways, we'll take a look at it. Hope you enjoy the video. Yeah, so anyways, this uh, portable power system is has a 2,000 watt inverter, so you can run just about anything off of that. The battery holds 2,560 watt hours of power. It's a 200 amp hour battery. So I've got a switch here to shut the battery off in a 250 amp breaker there, I mean a um, fuse. And uh, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to run, I already turned it on. When you turn on this amount of amps, you want to kind of pre-charge the capacitors in here and I go over that in this video you just have to hook up like a uh, some people use like a diode I use a circuit tester just to bring a little bit of power into there then I switch it on it's on already so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on this inverter okay and it says it's ready to go there so I'm going to plug a heat gun into it and just give you a reading of the power output on this thing so let's just plug that in. I'm going to turn it on low first. Okay, so it's taking 216, 276 watts right now just on low. I'll turn it on high. And it's putting out about 1,000, 1,070 watts. It'll go higher. Uh, I did run a microwave and it ran about 1625 watts. So that's how you can power. You can run refrigerators or whatever off of here. Microwave. Uh, that's what it's geared for. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. And then what I'm going to do, I've got two ways to power this. The main way to power it uh, off the grid is with uh, solar panels. Uh, with this particular charge controller, it'll take up to about 400 watts of solar panels. What I did here, because solar panels are so hard to plug in and unplug with the MC4 connectors, I've got an Anderson plug back here. So you just plug this in. You can't do it wrong. And it's very easy to plug in like that. So. So when you're ready to move it around, you just unplug the Anderson plug, put the cap back on, and head out on your way. Okay, so, so I drained the battery down slightly running that heat gun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this wall charger in. This is a 14.6 volt DC charger, and it's made especially for lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, so this would take about if this is completely drained, it'd probably take about 15 hours to charge up with this with this setup. Now let's plug it in and see uh, see how she reads here. Okay. So again, I have the Anderson plug here. I wired this to this particular charger, so I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. And you can hear the fan kicked on. It does have a, just a light readout here. So when it's charged, it will read green there. Uh, so I'll just leave that on. You can see here it's 99.2%. And this kind of pulses when it's charging. You can see the battery like it shows it's charging there. Um, doesn't really show much there. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. Anyways, so we'll let that charge up a bit, and then uh, I'm going to take it home, and then we'll uh, do an outdoor test with it with the solar panels and everything, and I'll go into more detail about the same. All right? Okay, so here's our power system. We put on um, like a cart here, and uh, before we turn it on, uh, one thing with this is a 2,000-watt uh, pure sine wave inverter. 
uh, there's capacitors in here. So you want to pre-charge the capacitors before you actually turn it on because you can get a pretty good sized spark there. So what I have is a circuit tester here. What I do is I hook it to the positive over here on the battery, which will be right there. And then um, I'll just take this end and hit it to the positive side of this here. And you'll see here in the in the window, it'll it'll show show a charge here. See, 13.1. 12.9, 12.65. Yeah, it's about pretty close to evening out there, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the uh, turn the switch on, and that will give power to the whole thing. It's all powered up. As you can see, this is the uh, charge controller. It's powered up. This is the battery, reading the battery. Let's see here. Kind of see it there, but anyways, if I was to turn this on, then this will show how much battery charge we have. Looks like it's about full. Okay, and I'm gonna turn it off here because what I want to do is I wanna I wanna plug in the uh, solar panels and then we'll get a reading on how much uh, power is coming into the unit. Uh, so I wanna um, have everything ready to go. This is the uh, solar panel input to the charge controller. You want to have a switch on this. So if you want to isolate your solar panels, you can turn that off because they're going to be generating power. If you're ever working on this, you don't want that power coming in because you can get shocked. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hook up the uh, solar panels. One other thing I wanted to show you while I'm here is this system can be pre-charged via a wall plug here. This is a charger. Right here, it's got a little fan in it. So I've got this going into the battery, and then this is an Anderson plug. So you just plug it in, plug it into your wall outlet, and you can charge up your battery. If you're gonna say you're gonna go on a, out camping or something like that, you want to take this with you and you want to pre-charge it, you can do that. Uh, I have the same sort of plug in the back for um, the solar panels because these are just easier to unplug than a regular solar panel plug. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get the solar panels. I'm going to set them up. Then I'm going to plug it in. I'll show you how it starts charging the charge controller where we get input. Right now you don't see anything coming in from solar panels. Just uh, an arrow not doing anything. And you can see uh, we got 100% on our battery there. So let me just uh, go get the solar panels and we'll get it all set up. Yeah, buddy. Okay, so what we have is we've got a couple of 200 watt solar panels. Uh, these are not portable, but you know, you can make them portable or make your own rack if you want. We do have portable panels at the shop also. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to hit hook two 400, 200 watt panels in series, which will give you 400 watts. And what you do on the panels is you basically just hook, this is the positive to one side, the negative to the other. Hook that in there. And then what you do is you take your positive and hook it to your wire that goes to the, uh, uh, the charge controller. So you just push that in there, take the other wire from the other panel, which is the negative, and you hook it into this, this wire here. Okay, now let's go over to the uh, power unit and check it out, see how, it, uh, how you plug it in over there. Okay, so here's the solar panels up front of them. It's kind of early in the morning, so I'm not sure what kind of power we're going to get. Plus, the battery is fairly well charged. So we'll check it out. We'll go over to the uh, power station over here, and we'll plug her in. Okay, well, I already have it plugged in. I forgot about it. But this is the uh, positive here. This is a 15-watt, 15-amp uh, um, uh, fuse here. You want to have a fuse between your uh, solar panels and your uh, charge controller in case anything happens. Okay, so I got it plugged in in the back. It has an Anderson plug like that in the back. And then I'm going to flip this uh, switch up, and that will power this uh, charge controller here. Okay, so now you can see. See, now it's charging. Oh, what's bringing in there? Let's see. Let's see. OK, 
Okay, so it looks like about 22, 23 volts in there. Or amps, I'm sorry. 23 amps going into the charge controller. So that's charging the battery. Um, now I've got this... Uh, I've got this uh, inverter on, so it also shows the input here, 13.7 volts, 60 hertz, and the output of 114. Uh, you can see here when this charges, this kind of flash is when, when it's taking a charge here. This is basically a shunt is what it is, and it just shows the power that you use down here and uh, the power that's going into it. Uh, shunt is right there and that's connected up to this top display we have here is a, a 12 volt fuse area so you can actually run a bunch of 12 volt appliances or LED lights or whatever you want off of here and it just takes these spade fuses so you've got 10 uh, docks here to put your lines into um, of course you've got two 110 Bolt plugs in the top here. You got a USB charger, and then you have a remote, so you can put the remote on the uh, inverter and, and just tell you. Basically, it gives you the same reading that's on here. Uh, another thing that I wanted to mention: solar power is kind of cool. Uh, I'm going to put a link to another one of our videos where I did uh, a couple of uh, fans for our dog kennels, and it's basically just running off a solar panel, no battery at all. There's just a, a speed controllers controlling the uh, bolts coming into the fans and they're just basically 12 volt radiator fans. Now those fans can be used for the dog kennels. You could probably use them to vent out your greenhouses if you want. The nice thing about that is it's batteryless. That's a word. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you know, the nice thing that we like about it is that we can leave for work during the day and once the sun comes up high enough, they'll start moving. And when the sun goes down, they stop. So it'd be the same sort of scenario with the greenhouse. Once the sun starts coming up pretty high, it starts moving air through the greenhouse, which you want. You don't want it to get stagnant in there and, and just overheat. So that could be a, a good way to um, utilize that process. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go get a blow dryer and uh, plug it in here and just see what this does with the blow dryer plugged in. I've, I've run you know, two refrigerators overnight on this, no problem. I ran an old microwave off of this. It took about 1,625 watts and it ran fine. So that's the nice thing about this. The whole idea is to keep your refrigerators running overnight or just a backup power unit. It's, it's kind of a nice setup and it's, uh, it's completely modular. So if one piece goes out, you can just replace that piece. You could actually also add another charge controller for this size of battery and it would uh, you could uh, have another 400 watt array so you'd be bringing eight, 800 watts to charge this battery up uh, so let me go get the blow dryer and we'll check out see how it does okay so I've got the blow dryer I'm going to turn it on low then I'm going to turn it on high I'll try to keep the noise back so you, it's not too annoying uh, go ahead and start it on low and we'll take a look at the top of this readout on this uh, uh, inverter here and it'll give you how many uh, how many watts it's taking out. Right now it's on zero so I'm going to turn it on low. Okay you got 32.9 watts. I'm going to turn it on high now. You got about 129 and 28 watts coming out of there. Okay, and you can see the battery charging again. Um, shut her off. Anyways, down here you can see the solar panel is bringing in uh, 20 amps. So what you do for your watts is you multiply 20 by 12, uh, 12 volts, and that ends up to be about 240 watts that that's bringing in right now. Of course, it's early in the morning again, and uh, this battery is fairly well charged, so it might be limiting what it's taking in. It can take up to 40 amps on this charge controller, so you can see the possibilities of this. Now you can see it's charging. That's, it's just charging from the solar there now, so it'll bring it back up to 100%, which is, on this battery, it's 200 amp hours. 
It's 2,560 watt hours. And this is lithium ion phosphate. So this has probably got at least a 10 year shelf life. Uh, the nice thing about these is they're very safe batteries. The only thing you don't want to do is you don't want to let them freeze uh, or try to charge them when they're freezing. Uh, it has an automatic a BMS system in it, uh, which is the battery manage management system. Um, basically, this was just a luggage cart. Uh, we used uh, we used to have that organic farm, so we had these uh, vegetable trays that we got from a friend of ours at a supermarket, and we just basically folded this out, put all this in there, put it onto the cart. It's hundred percent mobile. The nice thing I like about this is you can unplug it from your um, charging, solar and uh, house charging, and then you can wheel it wherever you need to go. And it's got enough power to pretty much uh, power anything in an emergency. Uh, you could haul this in a uh, RV or just keep it in your home uh, just for emergency backup. So hopefully this is helpful to you. Um, it was fun to build and uh, maybe you can build something like this too. You know, just have to put your fuses in, your switch for your charge controller. Those are the main concerns. And then you want to have a, a plug in for your uh, solar panels, which these, uh, I put this Anderson plug in for the, in the back for these guys, because these are so hard to plug in and unplug. So it makes it more portable that way. Um, but anyways, that's about all I got for today. If you have any questions, uh, just make sure you comment down below there. Uh, if you like this kind of content, uh, consider subscribing. Um, and uh, we'll try to bring some more videos on this. Again, I've got a video on solar uh, fans. I also have another video on a, another uh, power station, which you can take in your vehicle and charge with the alternator, with solar, and with your uh, shore power. Um, so check it out. Hopefully you like it. Thanks for watching.